gotcha. It's not quite quiet time, but... No, but it's good. I don't know... Doesn't really... seem as kombucha-y. It's not as bitey. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether it's the mango or the passion, but... <laughs> <laughs> one of it. One you don't of them. put as much passion. One. Well, yeah, I, I don't put any passion in mine. I, I, you know, I probably should start putting some passion in there. <laughs> you should. I make it with passion, but I don't add a, any passion mm. to it. Yeah. The, yeah. So yeah, I should probably put some passion in there. But so, you, so you like it or you don't like it? It's sweeter than I'm sweeter, used to. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, not used okay. to a sweet. So I figure. Yeah. I feel like that's like the every man's kombucha. <laughs> There you go. It is, um, and yeah, I think it's, uh, if you, mango and peach are always pretty similar. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, to where I would almost, if I had to guess, I would almost call that a, a peach. I would, I would say, if I was guessing, I'd say it was peach. Oh. Because it is that much sweeter. Well, that and, uh, yeah, I guess your association of peach has been mashed into mango because that's how you make yours, right? Or no. I don't make, I don't have peach or. Oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. Exactly. No, no peach. So, no peach. No peach, no mango. Raspberry ginger. Raspberry ginger. But you were close. <laughs> I don't know where I got that memory from. That's okay. Well, you should try it. Mango and peach, that sounds good. Yeah, I am. I have tried blueberry. I've tried mixed berry. Have you? I've tried lemon, strawberry. Yeah. Raspberry Kiwi. ginger's your favorite? Raspberry ginger's. Yeah, I yeah. imagine ginger makes it a little more bitey too. Yeah, it adds a little more zing, mm -hmm. which I like. I'm, a, I'm more about zing than I am about passion, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. I don't know if I'm going to keep that stuff, but we'll see. Keep what stuff? That in, stuff? In the episode. Oh, okay. Are we recording now? We are. Oh, wow. You shifted over and I missed the transition. You were pr pretty sly. Slight of hand there. <laughs> That's wow. right. Welcome to How I See It with me, Mark Pratt, and Justin Sternberg. This is a podcast that works to counter cultural polarization through thoughtful conversations. So you're going to bring some zing or some passion to today's topic? Hey, you know what? I try to bring zing and passion mm. to most topics. That's good. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. You should, should tell your face. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> you got to pull that. Was my, was, my, was my face confusing you at the moment? <laughs> no. I, just sometimes I feel like that just needs to be pulled out. You think so? Mm hmm Yeah. For the uh, levity. It was funny because we were talking about that last night, as a matter of fact. We were talking about the fact that typically we can associate um, anger with people who have red hair. Yeah. You follow me? And, and, I, and, I, and I think there's something to be said also for crazy bearded people. Because <laughs> I think depending on a person's beard, you know, it's like you just don't know. <laughs> You know, when you, so when you talk about you need to tell your face, that's what came to mind for me. It's like, you know, those moments when it's like, I'll say something and, you know, kids, sometimes the kids in the office, but sometimes it's even out of the office, you know, yeah. there's two extremes. Cause it's like, they either look at you like you're, they you know, connect. some, some crazy guy yeah, or they'll look at you and it's like, you can tell it's like, or they'll even say, you know, nice beard. I, you know, I have teenage kids this the other day when I was driving through, uh, uh, Chick-fil-A, you know, it was a little, a, little, a young kid, a young guy. He says, that's a nice beard, you know, and it's, it's funny. It just cracks me up. It's a mix, always a mixed. It's always mixed. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to, yeah. fun to see. But yeah. I've never had a, a luscious beard, so I, oh, I, well, I can't say I know. You'll get different experience. looks. You'll yeah. get different looks. Yeah. Yeah. You get the, the, the clean cut, the clean cut crowd looks at you like, what the heck? Yeah. Get out of bed. Do some shaving before you go to, you know, shave before you go to work That's for right. crying out loud. Come on. That military mindset, you know, yeah. kicks up, you know. Hmm. And then there's the other end. It's like, yeah, that's cool. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. 
You get it. You get you, the see. other end's like, yeah, he didn't get out of bed and shave. That's it, yeah. <laughs> That's my kind of man. They didn't have to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, styled his hair going down the road and out the window. There you go. Yeah, that is. Is that what you're? Oh yeah, working there. Well, I didn't even stick it out the window this morning. Mm. Yeah, that's keep, right. Keep it short enough. Still to looks work. good. I try. Looks about the same as it yep. always does. Exactly. <laughs> Nicely done. Your hair looks good too, though. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. 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 All right. So what are we talking about, Mark? Well. <laughs> With your zing we, and your we, passion. We, we've talked about a lot of things already this morning. That's right. But uh, we talked about dirt. Dirt. We talked about ponds. Ponds. Yeah. And we talked about information. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting because in the process of that, how often, how often, how many times a day do you think you'd find yourself in conversation with other people saying, why don't you Google that? Mm. How many times in a... Uh, at least once today. Oh, yeah. And it's all right. And it's only 630, give <laughs> or right. take. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime, yeah, there's a question of something that seems reasonable to be found out Mm. you know or able to be researched but you know that we don't know it it's like well let's let's google it sure yeah so basically because i was thinking about that in the context of confusion or decision making Mm -hmm. that that process if you have a difficult can you think of a difficult decision you either are in the process of making or have recently made? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Care to share? <laughs> if it's too, if you, yeah, yeah, I'm not asking for a personal thing, but it's like, how do you to walk me through that process yeah. for you? When it's uh, difficult, I'm not saying about picking out your t-shirt, you know, something mm-hmm. more than picking out your t-shirt for the moment. Usually Google's not very helpful when I pick out, your pick t-shirt. out my t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's just too big of a question. I need more specifics. Well, I'm th- I, I guess I want you to have in mind a difficult decision. Difficult decision, yeah. So, I mean, we are, you know, certainly in the middle of more than one difficult decision, but, um, what might a difficult decision topic be? Mm, changing careers is oh, okay. one. That's okay. not what I'm. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Of, but yeah, that's yeah. changing careers. Yeah. What about kids, adolescent kids, yeah. teenage kids? Where to send them to kid? Uh, where to send them to, kids, <laughs> to school? Where to send them to school? Yeah. Sure. Um. Yeah, where where I mean, or in the case of kids, where to go to college? Sure, it's a pretty big one. Yeah. Um, um buying a house, sure. picking a house. Or buying, anything buying a vehicle, purchase, really, yeah. purchase, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where that, to go to school? Mm-hmm. Yeah, does that count? Are those good? Oh, ones? Yeah, they're all they're all good ones, and and that's and I think that's the thing. So often, you know, we make a number of decisions in the process of a day, and I think, you know, so many of those are made in ways that we don't even necessarily think about. Yeah, like like the T-shirt. You, you grab whichever one's typically on, I mean, I should say, I grab whichever one's typically towards the top. I the started bottom. grabbing from the bottom. Do you really? Yeah, the way it rotates. Oh, you, I hear Otherwise, you. Otherwise, I just fresh. Think I would wear the same ones. Yeah, you'd yeah. only wear fresh t-shirts. That's right. This way, you wear the ones that are outdated and get them back in <laughs> circulation. Yeah, rotating well, uh, the stock. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because the clean ones go on top and then they cycle all the way down. Well, nice job. Started doing that. Yeah. You should try it. I should. It's interesting. Yeah. It's really, it's really mixed things up in the Sternberg household. Wow. <laughs> Man, now you see, now you've affected the way I'm going to make my decision. Okay. All about right. pulling mm-hmm. a t-shirt out mm-hmm. of the yeah. stack. You didn't even have to Google it. Yeah. You know, I just recently transitioned to rolling my t-shirts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How's that working out? I like it. Yeah. I like Does it. Does it fit better? The only problem is that I think it takes a little more time for me to decide what that t-shirt actually is. <laughs> true. Because you kind of almost have to unroll it. Because yeah. you can pick the color, but yeah. I probably have too many t-shirts to where it's like, mm, I got a lot too. of that are, you know, a dark gray uh, or a blue, dark blue. Yep. And it's like, 
hmm, is that that T-shirt or that T-shirt? Right, so you pretty right. much have to unroll it to see. But Well, that's where it goes into roulette mode and you just pick the one. Yeah. The next I one. Still, I still pretty much go with the one I pick. Yeah. 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 But that's how I make roll it. it. That's yeah. how I make that decision. I only roll my T-shirts when uh, we're packing. Like Okay. You know, well, I think I, I think we're downsizing, so I think we're in that that kind of packing phase where we're trying to fit as much as we can in as little space as we can. Okay, all right. so it's still very very similar yeah. mindset. Yeah, yeah. But so back to the decisions. Yes, not t-shirts. Yeah, difficult decisions. Yeah. So in that process, like pants. <laughs> yeah. In that process, actually. <laughs> go ahead in terms of wardrobe yeah for me the hardest decision is shoes yeah you have a number of i shoes. have a number of and i'm somewhat of a shoe connoisseur yeah no that's the wrong word that implies i know stuff no i just like shoes so you have so a, i have a, a shoe good, fetish. goodly number well, that's that seems dirty. Huh? <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, shoes get dirty, but yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. I don't think quite a fetish would. I don't know. Okay, I hear where you're coming. I from. enjoy Dude. me some shoes. I okay? got gotcha. you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, choosing which shoes to wear once you picked out what you're gonna wear, and then figuring out which shoes to wear that, uh -huh. that can be a challenge because that that can that's kind of like uh, your beard situation. It's like, do I want to be that guy or do I want to be this guy? Ah, oh. right, because you got. Sperry's, can, right? Sure. Like boat shoes. Yeah. That's kind of like your almost casual, casual, like St. James tennis player kind of, kind of have that vibe, right? Yeah. Or you can go with like some Air Force Ones. Casual. Which is, but it's like basketball <laughs> and yes, casual. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I understand, Mark. Casual. <laughs> casual dressed up. Two categories. <laughs> Anyway, no, so, but so I, that's yeah. a decision, you know. Sporty casual. Yes. Sporty casual yeah. versus country club casual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're getting it. No, no, I got you. You can I'm wear just... some sandals. Sure. You know? uh, Beach casual. Yeah. Yeah. But there's also different kinds of sandals. There's flip flops. No doubt. Crocs. Do you have a Crocs? There's Crocs. Yeah, I do have some Crocs. Oh, ah, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah. And then there's the uh, Birkenstocks. You know Birkenstocks? Yeah. That's like Burks. when, yeah, that's like when the country casual is going to the beach, you know. There you go. <laughs> they take the Sperry's off and actually, no, they wear Sperry. There's a, those are boat shoes. So I yeah. don't know, but all right. So, so you can't Google that decision. No, you can't. Well, you probably could. I guarantee you someone's got an opinion, has got a blog on it. Yeah. Yeah. What shoes to wear if you're going to the country club? <laughs> what mm. shoes to wear if you're feeling. So is that how you decide? Do you Google no. How do you decide which shoe to wear? Well, depends on how I'm feeling. Yeah? Yeah. Or what I'm... Where you're going. Where I'm going, what I'm looking to present. Do you ever ask <laughs> Megan? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. So yep. you'll you'll accept influence sometimes yep. on your shoe choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, often. Yeah. Yeah. Does she typically have an opinion? Uh, Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I don't always go with it, though, but... Ah. Sometimes, if it's okay, that's what you want. Then I, that means I know that this is what I want. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, uh, getting someone's opinion, even if it's not yours, can help clarify what you truly feel, right? Oh, sure. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can seem that like phenomena of like, oh, they picked the one I don't want, mm -hmm. and then you realize the one you do want. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It helps you make that decision based on the fact that initially you didn't think you right. had a preference. It felt neutral until they Somebody picked else. the wrong one. Well, maybe you and just like it. defying other people. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, that's possible as well. I, yeah, that's certainly not out of the equation, Mark. I, I defy that opinion, though. Exactly. So I'm going to pick the other shoe. Mm -hmm. But fun topic. But at the same time, we can recognize there's a lot of decisions that are more complicated than that. Yeah. So in that, I part, guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it you seems don't have hard. A big enough shoe it collection, seems I hard guess. to imagine. I guess I don't. I, you're right. I probably don't. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd hate to. I'd hate to guess how many shoes. I, what the ratio of shoes that I have to shoes you have would be. I think. I think it'd probably be about like one to five, maybe one to ten, maybe. maybe yeah. But either way, 
No, but you were, we were talking about cars, and mm. we recently in January purchased a new vehicle. Sure. And I mean, that whole decision mm. process is intense. And so knowing that going into it and not being a planned thing because our, our other vehicle you know, it was reached a point where we realized, yeah, we need to replace it soon. Okay. It wasn't like a plan. Anyway, it kind of inserted itself into our life. Sure. And so I found, we basically picked a vehicle that we knew some people who are really like cars and own one of these. And sure. actually two brothers own the, the okay. same vehicle. Uh, and we said, let's go with that one. Let's just narrow the, the search down. Let's not think about other you know, SUVs in this category, okay. let's not branch out. Let's just pick one that we know is good and go from there. Cause it's already going to be a challenge. You got to, you know, look for all the ones available around you. You can sure. decide colors. You got to decide how, um, how much you're willing to pay year, make, you know, or not make, uh, you know, all the other stuff. So like, let's narrow at least down to that. Okay. And that was very helpful. Um, cool. Although you still get you know, I still was like pulled to these other models like, oh, this one's this ah. much. And, and ultimately it was just, I didn't, again, I didn't have the time to, mm. to do that. And I didn't have the desire to do that. So I was just like, stop it and put the blinders back on. And, and wow. we really loved the vehicle and loved the make and model. So it, that was a good choice. Sure. Um, Would you consider that more of a sneaker car or a Sperry car or a... Mm. Um, what do you what That's do you picture question. when you hop into that? What do you what model what kind of look do you think you acquire with that? Sophistication or Yeah. I feel like we call it <laughs> we call it Alfred. Alfred. Because, like uh, Batman? That's right. Okay. Because it's like it we, talks to you. It's like Alfred's Batmobile. Oh wow. It's like Alfred Mobile. Okay. It looks classy like hit the butler alfred's vehicle he would drive okay that's 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 what that's we, the feel that's that it gives you that's yes, cool exactly. yeah 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 I'm, so I'm you like school. yeah 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 so you're not necessarily so to associate it with a shoe but more of an identity of its own well right yeah <laughs> alfred so. alfred yeah yeah no one's fair and though. you know like alfred is cool like he he could he could get yeah. down if he needed to you know like <laughs> he's, he's been around Batman long enough. He knows a few m moves. I hear you. You know, like he could run a little bit if he needed, you know. <laughs> Depends on which version of Alfred you're thinking of, though, I guess. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's that's how I feel. It's like a sporty, sophisticated. That's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So in that decision, you were able to narrow it down to one model. Yep. Based on... Other what other people had chose. Also, the nice thing is though that model only started being made in I want to say twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. So mm. as far as your choices as well, it was very limited. Sure, you, you couldn't we, go back very right, far. Right, it wasn't, it wasn't like, like oh had... man, this one's pretty old. And right, it's missing all these features, but it's pretty cheap and it kind of that. Sure, like even that, like you take out that, yeah, variable. That was nice too. Yeah. Carry on. Sorry. No, it's just, it's funny to think about that because as as uh, John was looking for a vehicle, you know, for a long time, mm -hmm. it's like yeah, you know, there was there were times when I said, "Are you sure you want to buy a truck that's actually older than you are?" Because <laughs> you know he'd look yeah. back at late model, you know, yeah. stuff. You didn't have that late model option, mm -hmm. you know, that kind yeah. of thing. Certainly not one that's older than I am. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know, that was, that was just fun to think about because I think cars you know there's definitely models that have been around for a long time mm -hmm. especially in the truck range you know you can yeah, find true. trucks that go way back if you wanted to for an antique type like deal f-150s for sure yeah, yeah exactly you know yeah that'd be kind of fun actually that's what i'd like is a simple old sure. truck that is really simple to work on, not because I want to work on it, but because my mechanic would like working on it. There you go. Yeah. And it would be easy and simple and cheap to fix. Yep. You know. That's the thought at least. Yeah, that's yeah, the thought. Yeah, it's but, simple. Yeah. Yeah. Why? What would What would be important about being simple? For me? Yeah. Uh. Well, 
I mean, all the computers and stuff in cars mm -hmm. uh, provide some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I got that with Alfred. So I got gotcha. you <laughs> for just getting stuff from here to there. You know, as far as like what you think of as a truck, I just want the capabilities that I want, which is the ability to move stuff from here to there. And, you know, ideally it looks decent, but sure. even that, actually, you know what I'm re really wanting? <laughs> no, tell me. I'm, I, I'm curious. <laughs> there are these, uh, I don't know what they're called, but they're like uh, J Japanese made, yeah. basically like van truck things. They're yeah. like tiny. Sure. Um, if you get a three wheeled one with the, like the. Yeah, like that. Yeah. They yeah, got yeah. the flat, not the flat. It's a, it's a, a bed, right? Yeah, yeah. And then like a little cab up yeah, front. Very little. That you, yeah. Yeah. With the stub nose, right? Like yeah. it's just one. So almost looks like a front vehicle. van. Yeah. And it yeah. would be four wheeled. Yeah. 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 I really like, I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Just have one of those little guys. And, be a neat little look. Yeah. 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 And then I think I'd probably, still, I'd have to get a trailer or something. Oh, you for any <laughs> for like sheetrock or something like I don't think you're fitting that in the back. Anything bigger than six feet long, you'd have to haul my trailer for. But I want a van. But it would yeah. tow a tra tow a trailer. Sure. Uh, yeah. Anyway, no, I didn't realize you wanted one of those. That's cool. <laughs> so here's the number one reason I want that because they're cheap. They're real. Oh cheap. yeah. I mean, you know, less than ten thousand dollars. When you think of pickups, you know, they're they're, oh, okay. they're not cheap, right? I gotcha. Um, yeah. So the appeal is that it's cheap and it's kind of this quirky, fun. Yeah, thing. you like quirky. Yeah. 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 Kind of like my shoes. There you go. I think every shoe would fit in that. Just so by. as far as your, as far as Alfred goes, you like his sophistication. That's right. But where your truck is concerned, yeah. you want things simple. Not worried about sophistication not, at all. Not worried yeah. about it. Yeah. How does that, how does that factor into other decisions you think you make? Do you desire for your decisions to be more complicated hmm. or more simple well that's a silly question isn't it i don't know <laughs> i think everyone would desire their decisions to be simple but it's you don't really have it the choice mm. always right sure yeah yeah i think that was part of the alpha choice or choosing was you know like sp deliberately trying to make a simpler choice mm. you know by narrowing the, the vehicle down yeah i don't know so, so yeah and then so Coming back to decisions. Yeah. We, we've kind of gone around the, the bush on this one. But when it comes to those more complicated things, how do you typically go about making what becomes the right decision as far as you're concerned? Well, if it's a difficult and yeah, if it's a difficult decision, there's there's certainly many parts to that process. Mm. For, I would say the first one would be prayer and, you know, consideration that way and like just talking to God about it mm. and uh, challenging my, um, I guess, my feelings about it. Make sure mm. um, it's a sound decision, not just an emotional one. So that's that's part of it is trying to filter that out. The ways to filter that out is definitely prayer, but also conversations with people that I trust, you know, getting mm. counsel, guidance, making sure that um, my my dis the decision that I'm looking to make and the reasons for it um are sound mm -hmm. um um or if it yeah just like trying to get some some balance with that um obviously Megan and I will talk through you know pretty much any decision that's mm -hmm. uh, difficult um and that's good and that's getting on the same page is important there so that's mm -hmm. part of the um decision making process um. Also, like, I try, I try to be a long-term thinker, right? So, second-order mm -hmm. consequences or whatever. I think we've meant, mm -hmm. referred to that before. But, but like, go ahead, go ahead and review. Yeah, so it's like, okay, this this decision today will bring this, but what might that then bring, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. trying to think about long-term consequences and, um, you know, how will this impact our life later or our kids lives or mm. that kind of thing and, and try and be cognizant as much as is possible without being going nuts on it. Cause you could go through all million billion scenarios mm. that could happen or whatever, but like just kind of reasonable thoughts on, okay, what could that then happen? You know? And, mm -hmm. um, trying to predict the what ifs. Yeah. So like the, the buying a vehicle is a good example is, well, we'll have a car payment and we haven't had a car payment in probably 10 years. Mm. 
And so how's that going to impact our life, our family's life, our, you know, financial situation? How will that impact our kids' lives? You know, like, mm-hmm. we'll be able to take vacation and stuff like that. Like, we have to really think about those second order consequences or we would, and we want to, you know, mm-hmm. um, or, you know, rainy day situations or, you know, emergency situations where we have the emergency funds that mm-hmm. are needed, you know, how will that impact that? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of, is that, yeah. that's kind of the second order stuff. Yeah. Um, am I missing something? Well, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm asking you about your decision making process. I'm curious. Often it's very difficult for me to know the final thing until I do get some, um, advice or feedback from mm-hmm. others. I, I, I rely on that. Uh, excuse me. What do you, what do you do? What do you do if you feel very strongly about a decision and it's contrary to what other people are telling you. What do you do at that mm. point? I don't think that happens that often. Or I can't remember it happening to the degree where people I trusted didn't agree with me. Mm. Um, or, yeah. I think actually maybe one of the best examples of that, and even it's not a perfect example, but uh, when I made the decision to stop leading Celebrate Recovery, uh, that was a really hard one for me. I didn't want to. And um, definitely the advice I would get lean more towards, have you tried this other Mm. thing to help your situation? You know what I mean? Sure. Versus, yeah, that seemed like a right decision, more like... Mm. It didn't seem right to others, it seemed like. And sure. I had gotten to the point where I realized, well, it definitely has to be right. You know? Yeah. It, this it, is, it had to this get is to that point. the decision point. that yeah. I am making. Have to. Yeah. yeah. Almost like. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, and I think there is some to be said for that, that, you know, sometimes seeking counsel, you know, is a, I mean, I'd say most times seeking counsel is a, a wonderful thing to do. And yet mm-hmm. there are those things that, may seem contrary to what other people see Mm -hmm. about a circumstance because they're not in that moment, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, and I'm not saying, you know, you should always go against, you know, uh, peer supported or, you know, group advice type thing. Mm -hmm. But yet I think there are those times when we, we may get to that point where we say, Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. But I think this is, this is the way that I need to go. And, and I think at Mm -hmm. times I I like where you were at. Um, I think kind of, kind of starting off with God sometimes Mm -hmm. is I I think of, I think of Job, Mm. you follow me. He had his buddies around that kind of gave him counsel and yet they weren't necessarily full on. And yeah, ultimately, I think it was the conversation with God that made the difference Mm -hmm. when you're able to say, and I think, and I like what you shared because I think, and you know, I can respect the fact that we'll talk about this, you know, with other people or our spouse, you know, our spouses, that kind of thing. But I think being single or, you know, not having a a spouse, that kind of thing, Mm -hmm. I still have to make decisions. Yeah. And I think it's important to be able to talk with God about it from my perspective, because it's like at that point, I am kind of challenging my perspective. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, is this just something I want to do? Is this, you know, long term benefit or is this a a momentary thing? And I think when we're able to to, you know, be transparent and talk with God about things. It's like we're not hiding anything at that point, and it's all out on the table, and mm-hmm. I'm able to make a decision that is honoring, if you will. Yeah. So I like I like that aspect of starting, and and I think you know even having that, um, even starting that process, even as the as a as a as a a concern starts out on the horizon type thing. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing this might be a, a thing, mm-hmm. you know, like job opportunities. I don't think, mm-hmm. you know, it's not that necessarily job opportunities always come out of the blue, not that they can't, but yet, you know, we start seeing this, this cloud on the horizon starting to form that mm-hmm. I'm kind of heading in that direction. And I think, yeah, 
always typically being able to just talk with God about those opportunities when I see them and mm-hmm. kind of open and close that door mm-hmm. as necessary. I think that's beneficial, the decision. Have you ever, go ahead, were you going to say something else? Yeah, I got a thought about, yeah. Go but, ahead. Well, I want to hear your question. Well, I, my question would be, have you ever gotten to a point where you would almost say, there was so much information, maybe more like with the car, you kind of had that, uh, that paralysis of analysis mm-hmm. to where it's like, mm-hmm. it was difficult. Mm-hmm. What do you do then? Hmm. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, well, there, there's probably a lot of answers to that. But uh-huh. I would say one thing that came to mind is patience and slowing down, mm. you know, like, sure. Uh, if it's just as muddier, muddier today than it was yesterday, despite all my efforts, maybe mm-hmm. takes it, taking some time, sleeping on it a little more, mm-hmm. seeing if something, you know what I mean? Sure. Patience, um, yep. or seeing if the situation changes. Um, yeah, I think that delay can be any cool. decision as, as long as you can type thing. Yeah. That's kind of my perspective on it. Yeah. Or like, cause like thinking about buying a house, for instance, if mm-hmm. it's just like, there's too many options and. None of them feel super great, but there are a lot, and mm-hmm. maybe we just compromise here. Maybe we com- you start to feel like you're forcing it, you know, or mm-hmm. or you might be, and the if you're operating out of kind of fear, right? Sure. Like, and this one might be gone, and that one, you know, I think sometimes yeah. that can be a dangerous place to make a decision from, and so just saying, you know what, I'm going to step back, and I'm going to let whatever dominoes fall that might fall, mm-hmm. and then come back to the table and. With a little more, uh, you know, removing some of that fear, like letting sure. some of that dissolve and then come back with a clear head. Mm. Um, I feel like that can be a good thing as no well. No doubt. And I think I think we can see that, you know, that marketing dynamic in, mm-hmm. in a lot of cases, whether it's oh, yeah. houses or cars. It's like, you know, well, this may not be yeah. here. It's only going to be here so well, long. Because it's tapping into our natural our natural things, right? Like our natural uh, tendencies sure. towards that fear and that panic and that like they're just tapping into a nerve that already exists inside oh, us, sure. which is, you know, like that fear. Cause even if that, even without those marketing tactics, mm-hmm. we're still thinking someone could buy it tomorrow or mm-hmm. that sale could end tomorrow. So if they say the sale might end tomorrow, then, mm-hmm. then we're like doubly. Yeah, t- definitely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, and I, I appreciate that perspective because it is, it is kind of a, a fear based, even if the sale ends tomorrow, you know, type stuff. It's like, okay, well, there will, yeah. there will likely be another sale. Yeah. 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 And, and rarely, rarely is something, you know, not going to happen again. Yeah. You know, and, and even if it's never going to happen again, is that amount you save today because of the sale worth all the trade-offs, you sure. know, like maybe you can't afford it today, but you're forcing it or whatever. And yeah. so that means you're going to have to stretch for the next yep. year to make, you know, it's like, yeah. You, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think big decisions, having the a proper amount of time, if you have the option, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's like, uh, you know, uh, your job's going away. You have to take this one or that one. We need to know next week. Sure. Right. Like, it's like, yeah. you don't really... But if you have the option and, and it's a decision that of your making, hmm. then I would definitely encourage time, you know, providing an adequate amount of time, whatever that number is. I don't know. Yeah. Some, but for breathing room to, to not rush the decision because, hmm. you know, yeah. Yeah. Other than your shoes, I'm kind of going through your list mm-hmm. of things that you, you know, God talking with other people, mm-hmm. Megan. So other than your shoes... And when you disagree with Megan's choice or you decide not to go with her choice. That's right. Um, how often would you say you have to make a decision that's contrary to what Megan may desire? Mm. Do you find yourself there at times? Not that often uh, because I kind of will put Megan in God's bo- God's uh, responsibility, Right. So, so if, if, if I, if she's meant to agree with me and she doesn't today, then I'll just start praying. Like, mm. you know, if this is supposed to be, I feel like it's supposed to be, you know, let her come around kind of thing. So it's God's responsibility to change Megan's mind. If yeah. So that, I guess that doesn't mean I don't try. <laughs> 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 yeah. And, uh, 
<laughs> I mean, you know, Megan is, uh, we, yeah, we have a good relationship. So yeah. if, if I really want something, she'll come around it's not, you know, or vice versa. Okay. Usually. But um, I can think of times she'll many years ago. Most days. Well, depending on, <laughs> right. Depending on what it is. But a few, yeah, maybe a, a while ago, a long okay. time ago, <laughs> I was considering a job opportunity in Charlotte. Um hmm. To work for a pretty big church um doing web stuff and you know we prayed over that and you know it's a big mm-hmm. decision and, but she just wasn't for it for a f- several reasons which were good reasons mm-hmm. you know and i really wanted it really wanted it and so i definitely prayed about that and prayed that he, you know he would change her mind if that was right but also mm-hmm. that i didn't want to force it you know that kind of thing well i ended up not taking the job mm-hmm. and i look back on that you know all the time thinking i'm so glad we didn't make that change mm-hmm. you know that was that would have been a bummer for uh, many reasons a lot of the ones she was talking about right in the moment and other ones that sure. we realize over time you know yeah and yeah just grateful for the roots we've established here over you know we've been here almost 20 years now this yeah. same town which is pretty cool um, yeah but yeah so typically you either wait <laughs> until you come to agreement whether you yeah, cause sh- whether we're, you shift or we're not going to shove shifts. through neither of us yeah. and make a decision that the other ones opposed to like we're going to come to you know an agreement one way or the the other how do and, you typic how do the two of you typically come at decision making? In other words, are there areas where I would say it, it can be reactive? Like are there mm-hmm. certain topics that oh, become yeah. difficult? Sure, yeah. Well, before we get there, I was gonna okay. say uh the reason why we do that is somewhat through learned experience and somewhat through um seeing uh, seeing ex- others experiences this idea that we're going to make a decision because that's what he wants mm. well if something goes wrong in that side of the decision now it's all on him you know like mm. and no one wants that you know so we want to be on the same page to where neither neither of us want that like she doesn't want the resentment that goes along with that when you say I don't he want... and him are you talking about god or are you talking about no i'm talking about person? uh with your spouse specifically oh, okay. i got um, you you know, making a decision despite what your spouse wants is okay. j- basically you're brewing trouble, mm. right? Because on the off chance it all goes great, everything's great, you're going to be like overly confident about your decision making now and mm. not trust her. Okay. <laughs> so that's not great. You know, sure. it's now it's like, well, she doesn't know how to make decisions. I do clearly. Mm. And you might not consider her opinion there. next time. Well, I'm, I'm, there's no guarantees here. I'm just saying yeah, like... No. I think it's invaluable to wait to get to the same page Mm. for many reasons. This is one of them. Or if it does go wrong, well, now she's dealing with resentment towards your decision and you're dealing with Mm. resentment towards her resentment. (laughs) You know, like you have that to deal with. It's much better to enter the decision knowing that those are possible and saying, I don't want that. Mm. I don't want you to say, yes, we're going to do it. And then if it goes wrong for it to be something that is, you know, makes you upset at me. Like I want this decision to be, between mm. the both of us so that if something goes wrong we're in it together sure you know yeah anyway no uh your other question before that was what it, it was about basically reactive topics are there topics oh. that just you know between the two of you certain areas are more difficult to discuss hmm. yeah uh well yeah, so I I love change. I love mm. change. And she does not. She loves sameness and stability. So that's that's a good you know, anytime I'm like I'm thinking about doing a new thing, it's always triggering for her in a sense. Sure. Uh and she's you know, I would say triggering's a strong word, but no, it's but certainly not a comforting aspect to her. It's uh it makes the the hair on the back of her neck stand up a little sure. bit like, Oh no, what are we doing? and is this going to be a good thing? You know, just like all the anxiety. Yeah. There's going to be, a, yeah, so yeah. I was thinking that there's going to be a certain level of anxiety that mm-hmm. comes up whenever you might say, hey, I want to talk with you about something I was thinking about. Yeah. It could be, you know, yeah. not in a negative sense, but yeah. it's like, oh, what does Justin want to do now? Yeah. 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 And like, we're very in sync on a lot of things. We're also very not in sync on a lot of things. So like, <laughs> even if, if I were to say that, uh, 
the chances that my idea is exactly what she wants is pretty slim. Like mm. we want pretty different things. Like sure. we, we have different personalities, different, mm-hmm. uh, even, uh, styles, different, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, yeah. But she likes Alfred. She likes Alfred. Yeah. Good. That was yes. a, that was a combined yeah. decision. Yeah. Uh, cool. Yeah. 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 I mean, she's not super picky okay. about vehicles. She's not, yeah, she's, good with anything so wow. the fact that it's as nice as it is just makes her feel like a classy lady you know cool. so she's not complaining yeah i don't yeah i don't think she when it comes to vehicles that she would have a strong opinion except mm. that it's big enough to hold the kids and we can we can do our trips and she can get around town easily you know just like yeah. the practical things sure but what might be an area where megan would have a strong opinion and you might not uh, in terms of um, inconsequential things, yeah, uh, like st- style of the house. Oh, wow. Right? Because I, you know, unlike most men, I have a very strong opinion as well about style and stuff like that. Sure. Anybody with that many shoes That's has, right. a, has yeah, a style exactly. of thinking. Exactly, yes. yeah. I was also a graphic designer. So, like, you know, I, I, you know, style is kind of part of what I care about. Um, sure. And you can, like, look at my office, my our studio here, and you can see it's got a unique style. Sure. And it does not look like our house. Ah, right? okay. Like if you think about what our house looks like. So there's that. So you're allowed to style out here as you see fit. Yes. Well, okay. allowed. I mean, I claim that. <laughs> <laughs> this is my office. I, she's happy to let me have this for sure. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I get a little resentful that I don't get more influence in the house. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All right. That's fair enough. Yeah. yeah. But I, but I do like what our house looks like. Just to be clear, it's yeah, no, it's I, not a bad. Look. You you don't disagree completely with right Megan's right. style. No, actually, I like pretty much one hundred percent of her style. It's not mm. just not the most what I would want in in many sure. cases. If that makes sense, I'd yeah. prefer something else. But I like what it is. If that makes sure, yeah. or, and if I don't like it, I'll tell her and we'll work through it. <laughs> If you feel We've that had a few of those about. as well. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah. I think yeah. probably every yeah marriage you have one or two of those. Yeah. Yeah. So I when... think about when Harry met Sally. Have yeah. you seen that movie? I have not. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. Well, there's this couple that they move in together, and he's got this like wagon wheel uh, coffee table. Okay. And it's a sticking point. Like he loves it. She hates it. She I says gotcha. it's got to go. He says this is a staple. You know, it's a. It's a classic I bet. scene. Yeah, I so bet. Think I, could, of that. I could picture that. It's pretty ugly, though, that table. Yeah. I'm just, I'm on her side. But a wagon wheel. Come on now. It's a wagon wheel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool. It's unique. I guess, yeah. 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 No doubt. It might fit in here, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you could uh, replace your trunk if you that's felt right. that strongly about that's right. it. Yeah. So when you're able to... When, when you're having to make a decision and you see that anxiety kind of come up in Megan, hmm. what do you do at that point? Make the decision real quick. <laughs> 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 uh, I mean, through the years, you know, I've learned some better techniques. One yeah. is slow down, mm-hmm. calm, calm her down, say, all right, hey, we're not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. Let's talk it through. Let's... I'm Let's just put thinking. things on paper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that I think that's mm. part of it. When you think about putting, do you, do you typically make a list of pros and cons type uh, thing? That was a metaphor. Usually we talk through it, but okay. actually that would be probably better. But we, no, I'm I, just I, curious. I can't recall. We've done, we did that recently. Yes. Sure. But that's where you not, actually made a list kind of mm. and wrote things out, you put it on, you actually put it on paper or you put it on a screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, paper I said, I, exactly quote unquote. Yeah. yeah yeah i was thinking literal paper of yeah. course but yeah, yeah i said then i translated oh justin uh, he went use paper <laughs> come on now his tablet um, tablet yes <laughs> um yeah actually we should do that more we i would say we don't do that as as often as i think would actually be beneficial because mm. i think i think that's a good tool sure pros and cons list yeah of both versions of the decision you know yeah. the trade-offs what other tools would you say that you you have that have been helpful in making decisions outside of you know kind of i like how you're interviewing me like i'm some <laughs> decision expert well, well let me tell you mark yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just so everyone's clear i don't i don't 
don't think I'm an expert in decision making. Uh, but I'm, not saying I'm happy you're to an answer expert. the questions, yeah, but, but I'm, I'm just this is how tools. I see it. Yeah, we're offering yeah, yeah, tools, yeah, because yeah. well, yeah. everybody yeah. has to make decisions. That's right. That's right. Aren't you answering any of these questions? Well, because you're not asking me any questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> that got him, that was speechless. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. No. Well, that's because you keep asking the next question. I do time. because uh, you're 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 mining. You're you're offering these little nuggets uh, that are good, yeah. and I just like to keep yeah mining. All right. So you answer some of your questions. What question was it? I don't remember. Do you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, all right. Yeah. yeah, there's so many questions. One was uh, what tools? The last one I asked you was what tools do you yeah. think you have that you would recommend to other people who are making trying to make decisions right. outside? And then of you're me. gonna answer it after I answer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he got me. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we already talked about a bunch of them, but prayer, yeah. prayer is a key um, mm -hmm. conversation with. You know, your significant other. If it's a decision that's going to mm -hmm. connect with their life, then you need to be on the same page. I believe, mm -hmm. and I believe that means working to get there or realizing it's not possible, and therefore mm -hmm. there's your decision. For me, that's how I feel about it, and mm -hmm. I know other couples feel differently. You know, and sure, I've heard stories where God told him to do a thing or her to do a thing, and mm -hmm. not the other one, and they did it, and it was right, and all worked out, and they were, you know, I've heard of that. Sure. I just don't feel like that's how I feel about it, you know, and yeah. I believe I can use both. So that's, but that's my tool. Um, mm -hmm. Patience. Um, second order thinking, like trying to, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, pros and cons list, which really should have a kind of the second order thinking built into it. Like sure. pros and cons today, pros and cons, you know, mm -hmm. five years, 10 years, whatever, you know, yeah. if, if it, it's applicable. Um, counsel. From others, you know, mm -hmm. running, running your, checking your biases against some objectivity, someone mm -hmm. who's not invested in the decision, um, getting, getting advice about a decision that if, if affects the person you're asking is potentially not as helpful, right? I, hear you. Sure. I, mean, I would argue it's not, it's more helpful than not asking anybody. Sure. Uh, what am I missing? I'm not saying you're missing anything. I'm and I, and I think... Uh, I will add to it. Googling. Think, yeah, I'm not a big Google. <laughs> Does that surprise you? I just want to throw that in there to yeah. kind of stick it I, to I you. I think at times that uh, adds to the confusion. Paralysis. So. Yeah, it's the paralysis because yeah. you can yeah. find conflict. That's true. But uh, I think I think the... Um, we should talk about the thing that triggered the Googling. Oh, no, we were talking about dirt. But we're we were, talking about I was dirt. actually looking... Before that, we were talking about my broken... Sprayer. Airless paint sprayer. Yeah. And trying to figure out if it's a broken if the board the yep. logic board inside it is fried or the pump or the motor, the motor is yep. broken basically and so three you, key ingredients there yeah yeah, yeah kind of so googling like what's a used you know spare cost what mm -hmm. do these motors cost what do the you know boards cost? like yeah you know and i think that's a research dynamic i mean yeah. granted you can use that with a car or yeah i think research you know. is important yeah like, no, I think it's, yeah. and I think, and I think for me, that's where people typically come into play. Granted, you can be subject to bias yeah. at that point, but you know, it's like, I never leave my house. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, and I, well, I think, I think for me, you know, what I think about F3 or church or, you know, those kind of things where yeah. there are people in yeah. that realm yeah. that have expertise. Yeah. And I think, you know. I think if I had the reach, <laughs> that kind of reach, because I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like you have a tendency to know who to ask or, have, you know, hmm. uh, and or are at F3 and at, like, I don't know, I feel, I, I don't know, I feel like you have those opportunities, you're going in and out of stores, you know, you have relationships with different expertises you know you, you mean you, everybody you mean yeah. you everybody when you said you have that reach you specifically i'm thinking of you oh. versus me where i sit at my desk all day i got it's you. not like i'm going into stores every day and i'm starting building relationships there and i know what their expertise is or okay. you know f3 like you said i don't know um just i'm just i'm thinking through it because yeah. i feel like if i had those connections i'd rather ask the paint store guy his thoughts on the sprayer 
I, sure. In fact, I thought that many times last night when I was trying to look into it. Yeah. Like, man, it'd be so much easier just to ask the paint store guy if I had that relationship. But since I don't have that relationship, I don't mm. actually know how much he knows about it. If because I might know more than he does, like I whoever the paint store guy is today. Sure. Like I used to have relationships with paint store guys. Now I don't. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So, yeah, I, I like I like that you're used to the term reach because I think yeah. you know we all we all have a certain level of reach. It's just the the area we tend to reach toward, mm-hmm. you know. And you might you might based on where you're at, your reach might be more online, mm-hmm. whereas mine might be a. a a more interpersonal mm-hmm. as far as, a, and I'm not saying that mm-hmm. one is necessarily better than the other, even from that dynamic, but being able to recognize, yeah, there are people around me who deal with, you know, if I'm looking to purchase land or something, you know, like that, you know, or even, even aspects where I think about it so often with like, or like Lizzie, as she goes on to PA school, I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm having conversations or I notice my, my ears kind of perk up when I, you know, look at, when I hear about somebody that's applying for a program or, you know, they're, they're pursuing, you know, it's like my ears will perk up and I'll just kind of listen a little more intently hmm. when I'm, you know, hearing things along that line as, you know, I want to be part of, you know, make helping Lizzie make healthy, you know, decisions there, you know, in that process. So I think, you know, listening to people who have had, who have done that thing before Mm -hmm. is also very beneficial, you know, to where it it doesn't, I mean, and even especially Mm -hmm. with kids, you know, adolescent Mm -hmm. kids talking with somebody who may have some young adult kids might be helpful and decent young adult. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, very much so. Uh, But yeah, you might learn a lot from those who don't. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, There's something to be said for that, but being able to think about it in that aspect of, okay, what other people or who do I know that have had to make this a dissimilar decision or a decision like this, or an ex had an experience like this, who do I know that might have, you know, some yeah. hmm. expertise there. I think that's a, yeah. that's beneficial too, when we're trying to yeah. make decisions and yeah. because I, I think like you're mm-hmm. saying, I, for, and I think of it so much more so for my kids, our kids, even, you know, all the information is out there, mm-hmm. you know, but from yeah. a research dynamic, yeah. but just having more information yeah. doesn't always make the decision easier. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I would also argue that someone's lived experience is valuable, but it Mm. sometimes may not be as reliable as you might think. In other words, the circumstances that cause that person to go through that decision and kind of go the path they did. Mm -hmm. Unless you're like the closer your life is to theirs, the more reliable that will be. But, um, you know, I think I think there's something to be said for everyone's experience is going to be unique so just because they had a good experience going to the school and da, 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 sure doesn't mean you can't do your due diligence to see if it would be a good fit for you yeah um and i i think of the alfred again sure <laughs> the people who you know our friends who own this vehicle like they have a family of our size mm-hmm. um and again his brother has one they both have decent sized families they mm-hmm. both uh are car people like they you know, one of them, the bro- the brother, is a good friend of ours. He he's notorious for getting a new vehicle like every year or something. Okay. Like that's kind of his thing, and he loves it. So I'm like, sure. okay, so this this helps in the sense of you know they they have some shared lived experience and um, yeah preferences and stuff. Um, so that kind of helped narrow that down. So you know that's a good example of getting Other someone's people. real experience. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Anything else that comes to mind? What are your tools? Well, that would be that would be yeah. one that I would say yeah. is is a tool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can hear you doing that and see you doing that. Like I definitely, yeah. yeah. And I, you know, um, I think too at times, and it, and it's probably a different um, decision. But sometimes, sometimes I'll even find myself, or and I, I think it was more so, you know, years ago I would find myself talking with my father. Mm. Um my earthly father Mm -hmm. in that process Mm -hmm. um, because I would recognize that 
um, I wanted to be aware of the bents that I might have in certain areas. And, you know, I would, I would be able to say, okay. And I would sometimes hear my own biases. Yeah. You know, in, yeah, exaggerated in, in that conversation. Or yeah, it would, it magnified. would magnify, magnify, doubled. Yeah, it would. I would just be able to hear that. Yeah, and then I would. I would, and then it's not in a judgmental sense, but being able to recognize that okay, I might be subject to that. Yeah, that dynamic because I know I already am. Mm-hmm. You know, in so many other areas, and I think you know, um, for me too, um, and I think you said it in in a in a generalized way. For me, I see I see Chris as the other half of God's brain. For me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in that process, I don't necessarily make a decision unless we have unity, Mm -hmm. you know, going forward. Mm Because I think like you're saying, then then no one's at fault or we're both at fault Mm -hmm. to a certain degree. Not that we're looking for a scapegoat, but it's like no need to provide nobody's at nobody's at fault about this. It's just going to either this is our decision based on our current circumstances and, you know, Mm -hmm. and we're going forward with that, you know, Mm -hmm. or at least. Or, or we're waiting until that mm. unity is there mm. in such a way that says, okay, yeah, this, mm. this one decision isn't going to, isn't going to divide us. And I think that's, that's just beneficial long-term. I don't think I've always done that well, you know, but mm-hmm. when, I, as I, you know, talk with couples, I think it is those moments where, you know, I just push this decision through and I didn't necessarily consider you at all. I don't, you know, that's, that's rarely mm-hmm. beneficial. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I, I think, you know, being able to, and I, and I think the way I view, you know, not that I would, not that I would always convey it well, but being able to see, uh, Chris as a gift in that dynamic. Yeah. Is Instead beneficial. of a blocker. Yes. Yeah. She, she's that, not an obstacle yeah. to me having what I want, yeah. but she actually has a viewpoint and, you know, that's beneficial, mm-hmm. you know, to where yeah. if it, even like with Megan, that, mm-hmm. that anxiety, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. is beneficial. Yeah. Because there's a part of you that natural friction that's sometimes important. And it, and it, and I'd say it's most always important in a sense of creating unity. It's like, Mm -hmm. okay, where's that coming from? Where's that anxiety coming Mm -hmm. from? And then we're able to talk about it Mm -hmm. in a sense that adds to Mm -hmm. the, Mm -hmm. you know, the picture. Yes. And being able to Mm -hmm. recognize that that's important. And that was hard earned, right? Like, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm sure there was a period as probably all marriages where it was like that person represents an obstacle to my, sure. getting what I want. Yeah. yeah. Because, well, and I think, I think it's an obstacle at times to selfishness. Yes. I think that yeah. that's what the yeah. obstacle is. Yeah. I want my way. Yeah. And it's like, you're the person yeah. that's keeping me from yeah. getting that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's great. And that's probably another topic, but this idea that what I want is going to bring me the most happiness. Mm. Well, marriage teaches us otherwise you're, you're, you yeah. typically can have be have more self happiness and satisfaction in a relationship where you give, right? Oh, sure. And uh, that's that's the dichotomy. But yeah, that's a whole the, that's a whole other conversation. But it's a good write one. that one down. Yeah. Dichotomy. Yeah, no. Dichotomy. And they're all dichotomy. But yeah, and uh, and I think Continuums. about it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I think about that, even though you know, for you know, single people as well. Mm-hmm. And I think you know that ability to recognize that God offers that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at the same time, I think that's a, that's a big thing for Chris and I is that ability to come together with God and, and creating that unity to where Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, we can say, okay, if it's my, if it's my viewpoint that my Mm -hmm. perspective that needs to change, talk with me, tell me. And if it's, if it's, you know, Chris's talk with her or, Mm -hmm. you know, and yet God is available to Mm -hmm. anyone Mm -hmm. in that process. And I think that's where starting with him is is typically more important because i'll recognize there are probably some decisions that never got to chris yeah from my perspective just because god squashed them at the beginning yeah and that's a that's okay too yeah and to to be clear being single is is its own set of you know struggles to work through decisions and that's where i'm now yeah so i'm just i'm adding to what you're saying not to say it's a less than it's just different and yeah 
Um, you don't have that particular situation where if you push through a decision, now you have someone who could resent you for, I mean, it's all on you. I mean, you might resent yourself. And so that's something to think about, you know, but, um, so it's, it's, it's trade-offs, right? Like, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's still, like you said, it's still good to certainly to bring God into decisions, but also to bring others in if it's, if it's something you feel like you might be biased in and, or don't have the patience to give it, to really listen to God, you know? Sure. So yeah. let's be honest here. Mm-hmm. Have you ever just flipped a coin to make a decision? Uh, <laughs> I can't recall doing it. Really? Okay. How about you? Sure. Do you, ha- do you have an example? Yeah, it's typically something, t- something simple like rock, paper, scissors where, you know, it's just you're deciding a, a trivial type yeah. thing. Do you have an example? Who gets, who gets to go first? In what? Like like picking a team. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Like, yeah, like who sure. Gets, yeah. Then that's, yeah. That's a, yeah. 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 I just wanted to see it. I just decisions? wanted to see Have you ever done it in a life decision? Not in a life decision. No. Yeah. Not like not like anything that really mattered, but yeah, yeah. that'd be kind of fun to try. Who gets to go first or who gets yeah. or who gets something in a tie? Yeah. yeah. You know, that makes where sense. it's like a cookie. You know? Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> In uh, the Bible, they talk about casting lots. They do, and it was like a let choosing the spirit disciples. choose through this through this luck, basically. Yeah. You know, and I think that's that's certainly a viable thing if you kind of really stuck. Yeah, let God choose through the coin in the air. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think we could do that more. Maybe you think a little more faith. A little more faith. Yeah. Yeah. A little less research. What do you think? Yeah. A little less googling. Yeah. A little more coin tossing. I hear you. A little more. Uh, what, it, what do they call those? Casting lots. That's what That's it was. right. Yeah. 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 Drawing straws. That's right. Casting yeah. lots. Yeah. What, there's proverbs about that too. Well. That, uh, casting lots keeps strong opponents apart. Something to that effect. Oh, I don't recall yeah. that. Proverbs. And so in other words, it, you know, you're, you're avoiding conflict. Hmm. If the if basically drawing those straws, oh, yeah. you know, it avoids the conflict. We yeah. can come together and say, okay, we can't agree. So yeah, and it, it and it is what it is, and yeah, you know, we and can that's be like, mature about this and move on. That's good, and recognize, hey, I got the short straw. Yeah, and next time I might not. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, that's uh, thanks for sharing, Justin. You know, Decisions. You, you made me share how I see it, so I did. <laughs> this is how we see it. Hey, thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like how I see it, please do all the things that podcasts tell you to do. Subscribe, rate, review, follow us, uh, and or talk nicely about us on social media. If you want to reach out, the email is us at howiseeit.click. Yep, I said dot click, as in dot C-L-I-C-K. Please tell your friends about this show, and we'll see you on the next one.